And unsurprisingly, we're hearing from companies that issues impacting the broader market are also hitting the solar industry. That's, of course, the chip shortage as well as the chip shortage. Chips are becoming increasingly important for car makers. You then guide down substantially next quarter for something that's hurting a lot of companies. Chip shortage, obviously, some commodity issues. How do we uh, find something different and interesting to talk about? Here we go again. He's going to talk about the chip shortage. Well, yeah, but this time it's not about a virus that shuts down production or about a retailer hoarding GPUs to make more money. No, this time it's all about water. Actually, it's about the lack of it and the response from the semiconductor industry, specifically TSMC. You see, Taiwan is located just in the right spot to have a lot of rainfall. From its tropical zone placement to typhoon rainfalls, it should look like this all the time, right? I mean, apparently it rains 165.5 days a year. That's almost half the year. Not only that, but they have plenty of reservoirs like this one to pull water from, right? This is how bad it is now. So how did this drought get this bad? It could be blamed on many things, but mainly it's the lack of any typhoon storm rainfall last year in 2020. That's something that hasn't happened in half a century. On average, Taiwan receives rain from three to four typhoons and a couple of storms, and each of them can drop dozens of inches of rain. So that's the main culprit. But there's also deforestation to blame, which can cause increase in water runoff, which means that the capacity of the reservoir is reduced. There's also the fact that Taiwan has leaky pipes. Yep, just leaky pipes that lose about 14% of the country's water supply. It's been an ongoing issue that they are trying to fix actively. All of that has caused the country to ration water. It got so bad that they would cut running water to their people two days a week. And here we are back at silicon manufacturing. Do you know how much water these companies use? It's insane. TSMC in 2019 used 154.4 billion liters of water. To scale, that's more than the entire US consumes every day, which amounts to something like 61,760 Olympic sized pools per year. And more than half of that water would be reserved for ultra pure water. Considering TSMC makes about 12 million wafers a year, that's almost 13,000 liters used for one tasty wafer snack. And with all of that, can you believe that semiconductor giant TSMC was originally pretty much excluded from the rationing measures placed in Taiwan because of their importance to the country's economy and, let's be honest, the entire world? But eventually, they had no choice but to limit the water for semiconductor industries, and then we saw TSMC bring in tankers of water for chip manufacturing. Thankfully though, TSMC isn't sitting on their hands. Heck, they have a whole section of their website dedicated to their water use and their plans to be more resource efficient. That insane 150 plus billion liters of water being used in 2019, well, about 86% of that water is being recycled, although only some of it was pure enough to be reused in chip manufacturing. They're also being pretty proactive by building the world's first industrial wastewater treatment center that can meet nearly half of their daily water needs. Basically, with this plant, they're gonna be able to convert the nastiest water that they and other nearby industries produce and turn it into clean water and even ultra pure water. Now, you heard me say it a couple of times, so you're probably wondering, what what is ultra pure water? Isn't distilled or even deionized water pure enough? Well, no. UPW is probably the closest thing to pure H2O because it has nothing else but hydrogen and oxygen. No speck of dirt or random ions, no salts, minerals, or even organic matter. It's chemically pure. And it's this property, plus the fact that it's negatively charged, that makes it the perfect liquid for semiconductor manufacturing. As the photolithography happens, it etches away either the silicon or some metals, and tiny microscopic fragments get left behind from this etching. So every time a photolithic cycle passes, the wafer has to be washed by ultra pure water to get rid of those impurities. That can happen hundreds of times for a single wafer, hence why it needs so much water. 
As you can see from this diagram, the treatment process for ultra pure water is very complex. It actually requires 12 filtration steps even after reverse osmosis, which is by the way also a step used to turn seawater into uh, drinking water. The final ultra filtration stage use filters with pores that are just 20 nanometers wide. And before they're even used, those filters need to be scanned with an electron microscope to make sure that they're in fact perfectly clean. That's how clean this water has to be for the negative charge to pick up unwanted debris from the wafer. The water almost works like a magnet just picking up all of the dirt from the silicon wafer. After that ultra pure water is used, it is somehow recycled, but not all of it is reused. With the new water reclamation plant though, that 86% of reusability is going to go up. At a scale of hundreds of billions of liters of water a year, it's good to know that they want to reduce their waste even more. Remember, 2020 and 2021 saw their production ramp up significantly, up to 50% more since 2019, which means that 154 billion liters it's a lot more now. As for other companies and plants like Samsung and Intel, they all have their own goals. Now, who knew so much water would be an integral part of making something that shouldn't be in contact with it anymore? Oh, by the way, ultra pure water is not the kind of water that you want to drink. It tastes horrible. It's very bitter because, you know, in normal water, the taste comes from the minerals. Plus, like I said earlier, it kind of leaches minerals, which means when you drink it, it will leach minerals off of you. You can say that uh, when you drink it, it drinks you back. Now, with all of this, it might seem like there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but this is where we end our educational journey and come back to reality. In the news, we recently learned that Taiwan was hit with a particularly bad heat wave. It's unclear if it hit TSMC, but the situation doesn't seem like it's getting better. And while it's nice that they are building a plant to recycle water in 2021, that plant would only recycle and reuse an additional 2 to 3% of its water. And that's if we go by the 2019 water consumption data. So let's be real, it's probably going to be around 1% or less with the 2021 chip production. And it's not until 2024 that this process will really make a difference. That means that if this drought continues, it will likely worsen the chip shortage we have right now. So this was a different kind of video, right? I'd love to make more of this type of content where I can talk about things that, uh, you know, tingle my curiosity. So let me know if you guys would like to see more. Also, I know I changed, I shaved, and it's a different day, but that's not important. Now, as usual, you can leave a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about, you know, any of the information we shared today. You can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Snows out. I think I broke my finger.